Hey friends, if you have some time, I'd love to share a word that I believe God gave me right now. And I believe it'll really encourage you because of some of the things that we're seeing take place in our nation uh, here in the United States. My name is Caleb Purcell. I'm a youth and young adult pastor here at the Believers Church of Madera in California. Um, And the Lord spoke this word to me back in September of 2023, and I've been sitting on it. I've been chewing on it. Um, I've been studying the word, asking Holy Spirit what he is really wanting to do in this time. Um, And I didn't feel like I should share that word yet at the time. Um, And I'm seeing now why. It's because God has been revealing some things to me in the word of God, in the Bible, um, some scriptures, and as well as I've been watching and I've been praying, just like Jesus said to do, where I've been watching some things take place, even in the natural realm, where I'm seeing a lot of this stuff that God was showing me in this word. Um, it's just a couple sent- it's just a few sentences uh, that Holy Spirit spoke to me. But just to give a little bit of background, um, I just want everybody to know first and foremost that this is not to glorify me. This isn't to give me a platform or anything like that. I genuinely don't want it. I want Jesus to be glorified in all of this, what I'm about to share with you, because what I'm going to share with you are things that God is saying and things that God is going to do. And he is doing right now. It has nothing to do with me. I'm just a vessel that God spoke to, to share this word with you. I believe in this, in this video that you're watching. So I'm sure some of you have read the caption or the title of this video. um, So you kind of have an idea a little bit about what we're going to talk about and what the Lord shared with me. But let me, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to word for word share with you exactly what the Lord spoke to me on the inside. And guys, this wasn't one of those times where I was questioning if it was God or if it was me. It was one of those times where it was very clear. And it was actually, as a matter of fact, I was just getting ready to go to work. I wasn't even really thinking about anything like this. This is where I knew that it was a word from the Lord. So I began to write this stuff down word for word, what Holy Spirit was saying to my spirit. Um, And like I said, through this year or so process of dwelling and chewing on this word. God has given me some scriptures and showed me some things in the Bible that, and even through some other prophets that are out there um, and ministers that have heard from the Lord, they've heard almost exactly what the word of the Lord, what, what, what the Lord showed me through his word in here. So I'm going to read this real quick, what the Lord spoke to me. This is exactly what the words, uh, what the Lord spoke to me um, word for word. And then I'm going to go into a few scriptures real quick and talk a little bit about this and break it down. So this is what I wrote down. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, We are going to stand in front of the whole nation, just as David did in battle with the giants in our land. And just as David brought down Goliath with the covenant he had with God, the anointing God gave him, and the words God gave him to say, we will also bring down the giants in our land through those same Uh, three things. And just as David used Goliath's sword, now this is important to see too, just as David used Goliath's sword to cut off his head and finish him, we will also do the same thing. One of the first things the Lord showed me was giants. If you go back and study through Genesis 6 and other places throughout the word of God, you'll see the word that they use is a Hebrew word, Nephilim. And what that means was what the Nephilim were and what Goliath was, and there were many other giants. uh, It was a mixture between demons and humans where they actually created another race. It was, it's pretty wild, crazy stuff. Um, there's been even scientists that have proven a lot of this stuff. Uh, the giants were a a real species and stuff, but, um, so the Lord showed me that the same way that the devil tried to create giants in the land to destroy the people of God, he's doing the same thing today in modern day where he's influencing, uh, men and women, uh, whether through thoughts and ideas and things like that to, create giants and let demons have places of authority in the land. And so that's kind of what the, uh, uh, the symbolism of that is. And then, uh, David, the way he brought down, cause see, he didn't kill Goliath when he hit him with the stone. I don't believe, I believe he didn't kill, kill him and finish him completely off until he used Goliath's sword and cut his whole head off. Um, so the three things that the Lord showed me was David had covenant with God. We now, if you're born again and you're a believer in Christ, you now have a covenant with God, which means that 
you made a promise to give God your life and God gives him everything. God gives you in return everything. That's a covenant. David knew his covenant with God. David was anointed by God and the anointing is the Holy Spirit coming and he helps you do things that you naturally physically can't do with your own body, but Holy Spirit gives you the ability to do it. So David had the anointing to kill Goliath and take Goliath down. And then David also used the word of God. He used his mouth to defeat Goliath as well. So the Lord shows me all this, and I'm like, man, that's awesome, God. We're going to be able to take down the giants in our land. And at the time, I had a little bit of a revelation, just a little nugget of what God was saying. But throughout this year, um, I've been watching God just... He keeps bringing this word back to me, and he keeps opening up the word and giving me some scriptures that I can stand on. And there's multiple. I'm only going to go through about three of them um, that the Lord has shown me, Um, and like, and then other prophets. Like they would, there's other ministers that right after I received this word, um, whether they received it before me or not, I don't know. But I began to see um, videos and other ministers sharing words that go right along with this stuff. Some of them even had some deeper revelation about this stuff. And it just encouraged me. And, and I knew that this is a word from the Lord that he's given us right now. One of these scriptures is, is this, and one of the things that's very important for us to see in the story between David and Goliath, where we can see the symbolism of us as Christians, as the body of Christ, standing in the position that David did, standing before Goliath. Because see, what was Goliath doing? He was using his words and his mouth to intimidate the people of God. To where it actually, if you study that story, you'll see that the people of God were, were they were in fear. And here comes little David who was, I like how my dad says it, he was the Uber driver, you know, the, the Uber delivery guy where he was coming and bringing his brother's lunch. He wasn't even in the military. He was a little shepherd who was just a young kid. Um, it actually says that when he tried on Saul, King Saul, who was the king of time, when he tried on his armor to go fight Goliath, it didn't even fit him. It was too big. So David was, was uh, it, you know, that's why people use the phrase even in the world, you know, that's David and Goliath. In other words, it symbolizes a story of it looks like David is not going to win. Like all odds are stacked against him. There's no way that he could physically naturally win. And that's where the anointing of God, the word of God and the covenant of God come into play. Um, so we see here the symbolism of the story. And an important thing before I go into this scripture is we see that David used Goliath's sword to cut his head off. David didn't have a sword. David went out there and slung the rock and hit him in the forehead. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with the story, Um, even those that, you know, maybe you guys don't go to church. Maybe you've heard the story. Maybe you haven't, but I encourage you to go look up the story of this. It's very encouraging. Uh, But we see that the job wasn't done yet. When Goliath fell down, the job wasn't done. David went over to Goliath grabbed his sword and cut his head off. And actually, it actually says in the word of God that David went up and stood on top of Goliath. And it says that the Philistines, which were Goliath's army, they all fled and ran away. I believe that that is what's going on right now in our nation. And as a matter of fact, we're going to start seeing it take place. But I believe right now Christians are standing up all over, um, just all over the world really are standing up and we're taking our position And we're not going to let the enemy back us down anymore. We're not going to let the words of the wicked ones uh, terrify us anymore. Guys, listen, the enemy is defeated through the blood of Christ. Okay, you have covenant with Jesus. And I don't have time really to fully go into that. But let's go here. The Lord gave me Psalms chapter 37, verse 14 through 15. And this is what it says. It says, the wicked, right? Uh, Ephesians, I'll even, let me say this before I read this. Ephesians six even says that we're not to fight flesh and blood. So when I'm talking about the wicked ones and people like that, yes, I believe there are people who know what they're doing and are listening to Satan. That is real. But I believe there's a lot of people that are in places of power that are ignorantly listening to Satan as well, where they don't really know that that's what they're really doing. But so when I'm talking about the wicked ones, I'm really talking about principalities, powers, demons, demonic influences, and things like that, okay? So the wicked have drawn the sword and strung the bow to bring down the poor and needy and to slaughter those uh, whose way is upright, okay? So 
demons are actually in the land right now. They're looking to slaughter those who are living right and do what they're supposed to do. But check it out. Verse 15, it says this. Their swords, whose swords? The wicked ones. Their swords will enter their own hearts and their bows will be broken. I believe we're in a time right now where God is delivering his people and we are going to start seeing the words that these evil people and even evil demonic spirits have been trying to, uh, cause there's even things that the enemy will do to say to the mind and the body of Christ. So I believe we're going to start seeing these swords, their words come back to eat them alive, to destroy them. Uh, Psalm 37 verses 35 through 36 says this, I have seen a wicked, violent person, well-rooted like a flourishing native tree. Then I passed by and noticed he was gone. I searched for him, but he could not be found. Guys, I believe we're in a time of suddenlies too. And again, guys, I could talk about this. I could preach a whole message on this, but I'm not going to. I encourage you guys to study these scriptures out for yourself. But I believe we are in a time of suddenlies where there have been people in power who have been evil and doing and passing evil bills, passing evil laws uh, that are doing nothing but opening the door to the devil in our nation. And, you know, this is it's November 6, 2024. So we just had the United States presidential um, election last night, November 5th. And I'm sure you guys all saw the result. But I'm here to tell you this. An election isn't what's going to save this country. I believe an election, this election that just happened, I believe it's a door and it's a tool that God's going to use certain people, certain men, certain women that he's put into place in power in our nation to give freedom back and to do and accomplish certain things. But I'm here to tell you this, um, a certain person is not your savior. God is going to be doing all this. He is going to use certain people. And let me just say this too. This might offend some people. This might make some people like, huh? But he is going to use people that look like they shouldn't be used by God, but God's going to use them anyway, because he has a purpose and a plan for their life anyways. But, What this is, is it's a suddenly here, Psalm 37, verse 35 and 36. It says, I have seen a wicked, violent person, well-rooted and flourishing. In other words, I've seen people who are doing wicked and evil things, who are in places of power, who are wealthy, who are successful in the world's eyes. And then he says, then I passed by and noticed that they were gone. I believe we're in a time right now where the giants, the demonic strongholds that have been in our nation have been flourishing. They've been given a place, but I believe that the cup of iniquity is overflowing. Where now, just like, and this is my last scripture, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, it says this, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. In other words, God sees everything. You can't hide anything from God. It says this, For whatever a person sows, he will also reap. I believe right now we are in a Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 hour where we are going to see a harvest come in and we are going to be reaping as human beings where we have sown. If you have sown darkness and you've sown evil and you haven't repented yet, trust me, I'm here to encourage you and warn you that you are treading on very thin ice and you need to make your life right with God. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, chapter 1, verse 9, it says anybody that repents, I'm paraphrasing, but it says anybody that repents and genuinely from their heart asks God to forgive them and they choose to turn away from their sin, it says that they will be forgiven. God is so faithful and loving that he loves you so much. He'll forgive you. He'll move on. It'll be as if you never even sinned. Um, But if you've been sowing, you've been faithful, you've been praying, you've been following the Lord, you've been seeking God, you've been doing what he's telling you to do, saying what he's telling you to say, right now is the time for you to be reaping. And right now, the ones that have been wicked, that have been sowing evil, um, it is a point in time where if they do not repent, and this is a warning to anybody that listens to this, uh, that has been in a place where they know they've been doing wrong and saying and doing things. This is a warning from the Lord that it is a time and an hour of where we are going to begin to reap where we have sown. And so I encourage anybody that hasn't ever asked Jesus to come into their life and save them, I encourage you to do that right now. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10 says that if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for your sins, and not only died, 
but rose again, and he's alive today. If you'll believe that and confess with your mouth and give your life to Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, just a few verses after that, it says that anyone that calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So I encourage you guys, I hope this word encourages you to know that we are in a time where there may be some things that look a little crazy, but I'm here to tell you this, stand your ground, fight the good fight of faith, um, stand, put the whole armor of God on. Ephesians 6 talks about that. Fight in the spirit. Ask God what to do. Ask God what to say. He'll tell you what to do. He'll tell you what to say. But right now is a time and you're going to see it. I'm telling you, this is a word from the Lord. This is not something that I'm making up in my own head. You are going to see the demonic strongholds that have been on this nation that have held places of power. They are falling right now as we speak. And there were, the job isn't done yet, Christians. We have to stand our ground and use the word of God to cut off the enemy's head. Amen. All right, guys. Well, I pray that encourages you. I love you guys so much. Again, my name is Pastor Caleb with the Believer's Church in Madeira. Please give our page a follow if you can. There's going to be some more stuff that we're releasing uh, that is just like this. And please, if you can, like this video and share it with somebody that you know to encourage them and let them know that we are in a really great time as Christians because we're going to begin to reap where we have sown. Amen. And we're going to watch where the devil has sown, that he's going to reap as well. Amen. Well, I love you guys. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening uh, to this video. I don't think I did too bad. It was just a you know 16-minute, 17-minute video. So if you could share this with somebody, I love you guys. Have a blessed rest of your day, and make sure you stand your ground and do what God tells you to do. Amen. God bless you. Have a good rest of your day.